You're watching Charlottesville's most experienced news team. This is 29 News at 6. But first, one of college basketball's best coaches is staying in Charlottesville for the foreseeable future. UVA extending men's coach Tony Bennett through April of 2030. There's also an automatic one-year rollover if Bennett is still head coach at the end of April of 2026. Bennett, the school's all-time winning as coach, led the Hoos to a national championship in 2019. He's also one of just five men's coaches to be named Coach of the Year twice. Tony Bennett says he's excited to keep building one of the best programs in the country. It is a big day for contract extensions. UVA baseball head coach Brian O'Connor will now be in Charlottesville through the 2031 season. Connor has led Virginia to the College World Series seven times in 21 seasons he's been with the team. That includes the program's first College World Series championship in 2015. And of course, O'Connor and the UVA baseball team battle North Carolina tomorrow in the first game of this year's College World Series. All eight teams in Omaha practice today at Schwab Field. Our Marty Hutloff says the Hoos will be relying on their experience. The Hoos are back in Omaha. This a more experienced bunch, having played in the College World Series just last year. I have a ton of confidence in this group that um, they're going to continue to compete and, and, and rise up in this World Series because I've, I've seen it so many times this year that this team does whatever it takes to give give themselves the best chance to win. Great. Virginia starting pitcher Friday against North Carolina will be sophomore left-hander Evan Blanco. He pitched the Cavaliers to a 7-2 win against the Tar Heels earlier this season and pitched well in the regionals. You're going to go with your guy. He's our guy. He's earned it. This ballpark is amazing. Um, you know, I'm super thankful to be back. Uh, it's such a cool atmosphere, cool environment. Ball was flying today a little bit. A few home runs are on BP. Junior shortstop Griff O'Farrell is one of six in Virginia's starting lineup who played in the College World Series last season. He spoke to the team earlier this week. To see O'Farrell and other guys step up and say, this is what I learned from last year, and this is what we need to do. Our main message has just been to not try and do too much. You know, we're here for a reason um, as long as we you know, do the small things and do what we're capable of. The moment doesn't get too big. Freshman Henry Ford will be making his College World Series debut. The Charlottesville native was in Omaha in 2011, cheering on the Hoos as a fan with his dad and uncle. Great event and one of the best experiences of my life. And to be here and experience it on the field and have a chance to compete for a title is a blessing. And I don't take it for granted. I'm just really grateful for it. We know the margins in Omaha for winning are very, very tight. It's very, very small what separates teams on the field here. The Who's and Heels play at 2 o'clock Friday. Marty Hutloff, 29 News. Ray McQua and Antonio Nicholas will spend more than two dozen years behind bars for a February 2023 murder. He was in court today for sentencing. Amaya Mitchell now live in the newsroom with more. Hi, Amaya. Steve Nicholas pleaded guilty to two charges in April. He will serve 23 years in prison, 20 for second degree murder, and three for use of a firearm during the commission of murder. More than 50 people showed up to court to hear the sentence. Investigators say February 22nd, 2023, Nicholas fatally shot 20-year-old Nicholas Pendleton of Gordonsville on Hardy Drive. All of Pendleton's family members were in court wearing buttons with a picture of him on it. Just before hearing his sentence, a letter was read from Nicholas by his attorney. He says he takes full responsibility and if he could, he would take it back. The Commonwealth's attorney and the judge both emphasize over and over the issue of gun violence and the need for change in the Charlottesville community. Live in the newsroom, Amaya Mitchell, 29 News at 6. Amaya, thank you. A Charlottesville-based virtual bodybuilding coach who sexually exploited at least six minors over the course of three years pleaded guilty today to federal child exploitation and child pornography charges. 34-year-old Elliot Atwell faces a mandatory minimum penalty of 15 years in prison, a possible maximum penalty of 30 years. According to court documents, between December of 2013 and April of 2020, Atwell manipulated at least six minors to record themselves engaging in sexually explicit conduct and then send those recordings to him. 
Charlottesville police arrested a city man wanted for firearm possession while being a convicted felon. Demillion Diggs was taken into custody last night. Here's a look at some of the firearms police seized. The lot included two AR style rifles, three handguns and one AR style pistol along with illegal drugs. Police say this is part of the continuing investigation into the recent shooting incidents in the city. Virginia health officials remain tight lipped about a rare strain of E. coli bacteria responsible for sending multiple children to the hospital after a trip to Lake Anna over Memorial Day weekend. Victoria Sanchez spoke with the father of recovering twins, one of them whom just got out of the hospital. The other remains in the ICU heart and kidney unit. Teddy Bear in hand, eight year old Chase Heiner walked out of Children's National after nine days in the hospital. He's at grandma, grandpa's house, resting and recovering. He and twin sister Kinsley contracted a rare strain of E. coli that produces what's called Shiga toxin. It is very uncommon. I think the, the epidemiology is something in the neighborhood of one to three cases per 100,000 people. So where did this uncommon bacteria come from? The Virginia Department of Health is looking into multiple reports of people getting ill after a Memorial Day weekend trip to a 17 mile long reservoir. To me, that speaks for itself. You know, the one thing that all these families had in common was Lake Anna. The large Virginia lake is popular with campers, boaters, swimmers, and borders farms with cattle. That could lead to runoff in the water. Children's National Pediatric Infectious Disease Physician, Dr. Alexandra Yance, says this strain of E. coli is most commonly associated with animals, and in particular cows. As multiple state agencies search for the source, Kinsley is slowly recovering. What was it like when she was at her sickest? So she was lethargic, lack of energy, angry, frustrated, but more than anything else, she was just lifeless. And after two weeks in the ICU, she's definitely more like herself. She's loving, caring, um, spunky, all those things that you would expect in a little redhead. So her personality is certainly starting to shine back through, which is for us one of the biggest indicators that she's doing well. That was Victoria Sanchez reporting. Louisa County Water Authority approved a 20% increase for water and sewer starting July 1st. A 5 to 1 vote led to the decision. LCWA says revenues have been falling behind since helping customers post COVID. It says it's been working on budgets and one person voted against the bill for a lower percentage. We want to meet and exceed every day the regulation. We want to provide the best possible service for our customers. Unfortunately, that service is costing more. We're not in the business to make money. That, that's not what our business is about. We are in the business of providing a service, but we have to cover our costs for that service. Now, Bachman says a few ways to cut down on costs are make sure you inspect for leaks and limit how long water is running. Former President Donald Trump and Governor Glenn Youngkin met in Northern Virginia Wednesday night as the 2024 election nears. The meeting taking place at Trump National Golf Club in Sterling. Sources say the discussion centered around energy, inflation, trade, and how competitive Virginia will be in the fall. The two recent polls show President Biden and former President Trump are tied in the Commonwealth. This afternoon, Republicans in the U.S. Senate blocked a bill that would protect and expand access to in vitro fertilization, or IVF. The Right to IVF Act, introduced by Senator Tim Kaine, would have enshrined the right for individuals to access IVF nationwide. Senator Mark Warner, a longtime advocate of protections for reproductive care, says he is, quote, deeply disappointed by this decision. I believe that IVF, which again, allows folks to have families that can't conceive otherwise. I don't know how anyone could claim they're pro-life, yet be unwilling to support IVF. That bill failed by a vote of 48 to 47, with just two Republicans voting for it. If you drive an electric vehicle in Albemarle County, you'll soon notice changes at the charging station in the form of a new fee. Jacob Phillips shows us what EV drivers can expect going forward. Much like a tank of gas, the cost to fill up your EV comes with every use. It'll be determined by how long it takes to charge the car and how much energy it's using. 
The primary reason for this is to help recoup some of the operating costs that the county is incurring for running the units. Kai Maury is Deputy Chief of Operations with Admiral County. He says the cost to keep these stations up and running is only increasing as EVs become more popular. The monthly cost is, is starting to exceed five, getting closer to $6,000 a month just to electrical costs alone, uh, in addition to the, the nominal fees that go along with the charges themselves. The county will no longer be responsible for that cost. Wednesday night, Emerald County's Board of Supervisors unanimously voted to add a fee to use the charging stations. When we installed the uh, EV charging stations, we weren't allowed, localities were not allowed to charge for the service. Uh, that Virginia code has since been amended, which now allows for municipalities and localities to start charging for the EVs. Abby Stumpf is Interim Director of Communications with Emerald County. She says the new change will also help the county continue its climate action efforts. It is a growing uh, um, trend in the vehicle industry, and we just want to make sure that we're providing the opportunity uh, that also aligns with our climate action plan um, recommendations and actions. In Emerald County, Jacob Phillips, 29 News. Thank you, Jacob. UVA is teaming up with a nonprofit to help veterans who are looking for a new start. The Warrior Scholar Project is a program that helps enlisted veterans transition into higher education. The nonprofit brings in professors giving lectures on topics like democracy, writing, and other core skills veterans will learn in school. This week focuses on humanities. The military isn't forever. And we got to succeed and we got to learn how to succeed in there. So we want to be able to set everybody up that's going through this program to succeed and do their best because they've done their service to their country. They need to now move on with their lives and progress. That academic boot camp runs through June 22nd. Well, a slew of swimmers from the area put their Olympic dreams on the line this weekend. A handful still in high school in Charlottesville and Albemarle County. And a horrifying scene in Northern Virginia. A state trooper hit by a drunk driver while stopping another one on the road. Some toasty temperatures here this afternoon, but we're not done with the 90s. We'll check that out. Look ahead for the Father's Day weekend. Your forecast is on the way. 29 Four Cavalier Aquatic swimmers will make a run this week at joining Team USA in Paris for the Olympics. Yeah, the group heading to Indianapolis today for the Olympic trials. Maggie Glass live in studio to introduce us to them. Hi, Maggie. Casey and Steve, the four high schoolers include one woman and three men, all attempting to represent their country in the Olympics for the first time in their swimming careers. The youngest in the bunch, Sarah Surjack, is a 10th grader at Albemarle High School. She'll be swimming the 200 meter breaststroke. I'm excited to race and compete against some of the fastest people. Surjack says team morale makes the Cavalier Aquatic swimmers stronger. Even though I do different practices sometimes, it's still encouraging to have the support of all my teammates coming with me and being able to see them swim and compete. Graduating senior at St. Anne's Belfield, Max Moore, will be swimming the 100 meter breaststroke. Just going to the Olympic trials is a dream come true for him. We've been training hard for the past couple months, uh, twice a day, um, six days a week, almost no days off, um, just working super hard, trying to fine tune every little detail. It's a point that has required countless hours and sacrifices to reach. Finally, I've put in all the hard work and dedication over, I mean, eight years to get to this point. It's, it's surreal. Western Albemarle High School graduating senior and future who, David King, will be busy with three events at the trials. He will compete in the 100 meter backstroke, 200 meter backstroke, and 200 meter IM. Very excited, I mean a little bit nervous. I think it'll be a new experience for all of us. King says although these trials are at the forefront of his mind, he has big plans for his Olympic career. So this trials I feel like is very important for me to get that experience. And then, you know, maybe four years from now in L.A., maybe trying to make a run at those Olympics. Thomas Heilman, already one of the fastest high school swimmers in American history, will also be going with the group. He will compete in the 100 meter and 200 meter butterfly and the 200 meter freestyle. When asked what the secret is to creating these sensational swimmers, Cavalier Aquatics coach Gary Taylor says it's the grind day in and day out that sets his athletes apart. It's not the bells and whistles, There's, there is no magic. It's doing the redundant daily things at a high level. We're blessed as coaches to work with individuals like this and, and all four of them are great kids, high character, work hard for me, for their teammates. 
The Olympic swimming trials will begin this Saturday and take place over nine consecutive days. Live in the studio, Maggie Glass, 29 News at 6. Now, from the UVA Community Credit Union Weather Center, here is the 29 First Alert forecast. Start to a new day. Henry Weems sent us this nice shot. This is Buddy the Bobtail Cat uh, surveying the property. Of course, a little bit of fog this morning, but a nice shot there. Yes, it was this cool start this morning. We still had some 50s and low 60s. A gorgeous shot of the sun coming up over Mass and Nutton there, and that from Janet Brayweith from her vantage point in Mount Sydney. Made it up to 93 at the airport today, currently 88. Winds are out of the south. Dew points have come up. It wasn't overly humid today, but certainly a big difference from where we began the week. 87, the current number at the Valley Airport in Weir's Cave, touching 88 for an afternoon high. We've got currently 85 there in Madison. Same in Palmyra, 86 there in Dillon, 87 in Stanton, and 85 currently in Harrisonburg. Here's a look at the satellite radar combined. And again, over the last few hours, there's been a few little returns here on the radar. It looked like there was maybe a little shower over the Somerset area in eastern, excuse me, western Orange County. But again, anything that you would see would be very isolated in nature. Most of us will be dry here tonight. Temperatures overnight will be much higher in the mid to upper 60s and patchy fog. Temperatures tomorrow. Tomorrow, several degrees higher than today. So that puts most of us in the low to maybe a few middle 90s. So hot, humid, and we have a front that will be approaching. So an afternoon and evening isolated storm is certainly possible. Severe risk is low tomorrow, but the storms that do develop could certainly produce damaging wind gusts. That's the main concern. But again, that's a marginal risk outline for tomorrow. So again, some winds that could uh, produce winds gust over 58 miles an hour. Potential for some hail. Flooding threat remains very low. The weekend behind that front, well, we got temperatures back in the 80s and it will be less humid. So a nice Father's Day weekend. What's not good news is abnormally dry conditions now with the current U.S. drought monitor. We had a surplus of rain in May, but this time of year it doesn't take much to dry things out, especially topsoil moisture. So that's not necessarily good news going into next week, which we're going to have a big ridge in the atmosphere build. So we're going to look, be looking at the hottest temperatures so far of the season next week. Highs in the low and mid 90s, humidity, heat indices near or maybe over 100. So high pressures near the coast that will continue to pull away our fronts up here towards Chicago. You see some of the severe thunderstorm watch boxes back through Iowa and Illinois and Missouri, and these storms are racing off to the south and east. The dynamics tomorrow will put most of this up into the northeast, but that front still has to come through. So an isolated severe threat can't be ruled out tomorrow afternoon for us. In the morning, we quickly climb out of the 60s and 70s. We'll heat up into the low, if not a few mid 90s. Again, after two or three o'clock, a few isolated storms. I think the coverage is fairly low tomorrow. The front comes through tomorrow night and then I'll get up that old drop in the humidity here for Saturday. Temperatures in the morning will start in the 60s and we'll likely hold those numbers in the mid to upper 80s here on Saturday and much the same for Sunday for Father's Day. So we're in the 60s tonight, mostly clear and mild. There's a look at the Michael and Sun seven day forecast. Get ready for summer heat wave next week, but we got a little break for the Father's Day weekend. Casey and Steve. All right, Eric, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're looking for something fun to do tomorrow night, head over to Friday's after five at the Ting Pavilion in downtown Charlottesville. Things kick off at 530 with Trey Charles and at 630 Ebony Groove takes the stage. 29 News, a proud sponsor of Friday's after five. Well, one of the keys to summer fun is staying safe. A new initiative in Charlottesville is working to keep everyone on two wheels level headed. Hey, hairstylists, there's a new salon in Charlottesville. The city of Charlottesville partnered with Sintera Martha Jefferson Hospital, specialized in Blue Wheels bicycle, uh, bicycles for safe routes to school program. 300 helmets were donated and are being distributed to city schools. Gabby Womack live in studio with more. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Casey. Promoting wellness and safety for kids throughout the city. Students learn about bike safety tips through Sintera Martha Jefferson Hospital. Now they have their own helmets to take home. Because we already had the bikes as part of our Safe Browse to School um, program at all the elementary schools in Charlottesville. Um, but we needed helmets to get these kids on bikes. 92 helmets are going to Burnley Moran and Greenbrier Elementary School kids. 208 others are being distributed to other schools in the city. Charlottesville Bike and Pedestrian Coordinator is Tommy Safranic. You know, biking builds independence and um, the more our kids can become independent, 
um, and feel that confidence, um, the better off they're going to be in general. The city bikes for kids provide transportation, fun, and exercise. Helmets make it safer. We had some kids that could not bike at all on day one. And not only on day four were they biking with us, but they actually went mountain biking with us on like dirt trails, which was a huge deal. So they got to take that experience home. They wrote thank you letters and cards. Um, and it, you could tell that how much impact that experience has on the kids. The city plans to build a program more in the future. For more information about safe routes to school, you can visit our website. Live in the studio, I'm Gabby Womack, 29 News at 6. Thank you, Gabby. And staying with the staying safe route, Virginia State Police is giving a first-hand look at what happens when you drive impaired. Trooper C. Aziz thankfully did not break any bones, but has a long road of recovery ahead of her after a DUI driver slammed into her patrol car while she was stopped with another DUI driver parked in the travel lane in Fairfax County. Both drivers were arrested. Running. We'll climb into the low and some mid 90s. An isolated storm or two in the afternoon, isolated severe as possible. Tomorrow's also flag day. As we look ahead for the Father's Day weekend behind the front, we get a break in the heat and humidity, and then it's all come roaring back here for much of next week. Hottest temperature so far of the summer season. All right, Eric, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Nightly News is coming up next.